What's up, guys? Welcome to the first episode of Flipping Success. Today, we have a very special guest, my guy, Aaron Trevino, who is a construction lender from Austin, Texas. He finances new construction, flips, and development deals across Texas. He also does deals in Washington State, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, and Virginia. Aaron can help you guys finance condos, townhouses, duplexes, and ground up construction or multifamily projects. Aaron, how are you? How's the weather out there in Texas? Man, it's hot, D'Angelo, but I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. It's out. It's very hot out here in uh, Scottsdale. Yes, sir. Absolutely. No, um, you know, I always enjoy, you know, uh, being able to chat with you. We chatted uh, last month and looking yes. forward to uh, getting back to it. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, guys, I specialize in how to get directly to the owner and to get the property under contract. You know, I've shared with you many of my techniques. However, once you actually get that property, there are several extra strategies. And today, Aaron is going to walk us through how you can purchase your wholesale deal without actually paying for the entire deal. And also how you can rehab the property without paying for the entire rehab. Now, before we get into some examples, deals, um, Aaron, can you tell us exactly what are your loan requirements? Do they have to have a certain credit score or monthly income to qualify for a loan? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, as you mentioned, um, you know, I, I do live here in Austin. I, I finance flips, new construction and development, right? Uh, you know, in terms of requirements, it, it, it depends on the lender, right? But at least at least for us, you know, it would be uh, preferably 640 plus credit. Um, and then, you know, just being able to have enough cash to put into the deal. And then also uh, we'll ask, you know, for a clean background check as well. So no, no uh, bankruptcies, judgments, taxes, foreclosures. And, you know, assuming, assuming uh, we're all good there, you should, you should get approved. Exactly. Okay. And, you know, the main thing basically is the deal itself, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we do look at, at the individual, right? So, you know, again, we want to make sure that, that everything is clear there. Uh, there's no issues and, and that the credit is there, you know, credit worthiness. Um, but yeah, you know, we are looking at the asset and, and the deal, right? Okay, got you, got you. And, you know, for our audience, Aaron, can you tell us how long have you been in the construction lending business? Almost two years. Nice, nice. You know, so, and with... Uh, being in the construction lending business, how what kind of clientele do you typically work with? Is it mainly you know flippers or people that are part time in real estate? How does that work? Uh, yeah, definitely. So I would say uh, I mostly deal with new construction. Okay. So you know, uh, as mentioned, we do the flips, we do the new construction and development. Um, but I don't know what it's like in Arizona specifically, but at least here in Texas, we're in a big housing shortage. Okay. Um, and I guess comparatively speaking to other metro areas around the U.S., there's a lot of land for people to build on. You know, people are wanting to, to buy the land. They're buying the land. And now they're looking for the construction financing. Right, right. I got you. And then, you know, addition to the, the housing shortage, there's also, you know, inflation with the housing um, construction products themselves with lumber and iron and things like that. How has that, you know, affected business? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, it, it does, but it doesn't, right? So um, I guess in terms of how it, it affects the client, um, you know, they would need to put more cash into the deal, uh, you know, but for example, let's say it's going to take you, um, you know, 250 grand uh, construction cost to build a house, okay. you know, that money would be put into escrow. Um, so that's why it's great, you know, being able to work with a lender. Um, that, that's a big positive as opposed to, you know, you just paying cash all by yourself mm -hmm. and really your cash is tied up into the project until you sell it right um, so it kind of cuts both ways right right and guys that's a golden nugget right there because as you know you can pay the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash but then you're not leveraging other people's money and you're not really leveraging the asset itself so when you have a good deal, you'll find a lender that wants to work with you because they want to make money as well. This is how, you know, you guys fund your business is by, you know, funding good deals, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing, too, is it kind of the, the misconception about lenders is that they're, you know, they're your adversary, right? But really, you know, your lenders in your corner, because when you succeed as, as a builder, as an investor, as a developer, 
you know, your lender succeeds and your lender wants to, uh, to do more good business with you. So it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? Right, right. Definitely not parasitic. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, when your lender, it's the same with, you know, you guys, if you're wholesaling property, if that's the, the main thing that you're focusing on for a real estate investment, you are right there looking for real estate investment deals. But, you know, you have to have a team behind you. And that's exactly what your lender is. That's your team member. If you notice you come across a deal that's, you know, $50,000, you purchase it, you can make, you know, $10,000 by wholesaling at $60,000. But if you have a guy like Aaron Trevino or Aaron Trevino himself on your team, now you have the opportunity to maybe double what you were going to make just by having him on your team. So Aaron, if there was a, you know, say $50,000 deal, what percentage do you typically require for the, your client to come to the table with? Uh, sure. So are we talking, you know, like maybe a flip scenario or? Yeah, let's say a flip scenario, um, you know, ARV of $120,000. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we're at least two uh, ratios we call, um, or two ratios rather would be good to be familiar with would be LTV and LTC, right? So we have loan to value. So, um, you know, at least with our lending, you know, we're looking at the estimated value of what the property would be after the rehab is done, right? So if it's a rehab, you call it ARV, right? Um, so that would be the loan to um, the eventual estimated value, right? After the rehab. So that's LTV and then LTC would be loan to cost. Mm. Um, so basically that means your the, the loan amount to your total project cost, right? Mm. So your total project cost is your all in, that, that's your development cost, right? So for example, if you're buying a property for 50,000 and then your rehab is also 50,000, mm. uh, you know, your total development cost or your total all in cost would be 100,000 because mm -hmm. that's the amount of money you're putting into the deal. Right. Got you, got you. And then they would have to, um, of that $100,000, like how much would they per se come to the table? Do they come to the table with the whole $100,000 or you know, would you guys lend a portion of that? Okay, yeah, definitely. So to answer your question, um, I mean, you know, for example, um, you know, on, on a flip, you could do, 90% uh, loan to cost, right? So that would mean that the lender would finance 90% of your total project cost. And then you out of pocket as an investor, you would bring that 10% down. Right, right, right. So really, you know, at least in terms of what's coming out of pocket from, from the investor, um, you know, we ask for, for three things, right? So number one would be the cash to close. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's your down payment, right? And right. then number two, um, whether it's uh, whether it's a rehab or it's a new construction project, we'll ask for ten percent of your budget in cash. Right. Um, so really, you know, your lender is just you know whether it's a, a major rehab you're doing or it's it's a major construction project, your lender is generally going to want to see that you have the liquidity to get through through the project, right? Um, so for good measure, a lender would say, you know, we'd like you to be able to show in the form of a proof of funds. 10% of your total budget. Um, and then, uh, you know, six months of max drawn interest payments. Mm -hmm. um, so you know how I, I mentioned earlier about the, the rehab being 50K, right? Right. 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 So uh, really you have a, a minimum and maximum um, amount of monthly payments, right? So for example, you know, we do monthly interest only payments. Okay. Um, so really, you know, you only pay on what you draw on. Right. So a draw would basically be, you know, the amount of money you're taking. So really, you know, for example, if you were going in and doing a rehab, you would have your guys go in, they would go in and do the rehab. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, we would have an inspector come out to the site, verify all the materials have been installed. Right. And then, you know, the lien waivers, uh, the lien waivers are signed, basically ensuring everyone's been paid. Exactly. And then, you know, you reimburse the money, right? Yeah. Um, so your monthly payments will go up and down depending on how much you're drawing and how quickly. Okay, got you. Yeah, guys, he just said a lot right there. But, you know, the, the main thing that you guys should take away from that is that, you know, when you come to the table with a, and for good measure, let's just say $100,000 all-in cost, 
So if there's 90% that he's going to lend for you guys, then at 10%, you'll come to the table with $10,000. So instead of you having to come out of pocket for the whole 100,000, you can come out and do you know $10,000 out of pocket just to close on the property and also you know have money have money in the deal, have some skin in the game, but you take draws out for you know monthly rehab budgets, and then your interest rate depends on how your interest rate stays fixed. And Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to reiterate what you were saying. But your interest rate stays fixed, and then if you you know have a certain amount in escrow that you're taking out, that's your interest rate would depend on that. So the monthly payment would depend on how much you're taking out of escrow every month. Is that really what you were getting at? Right. You know, for, for example, you know, we have that minimum maximum, right? So, you know, basically we can project based on, you know, basically on the scope of D, how much is in your rehab budget. We can project, okay, hey, you know, D'Angelo's rehab, you know, his monthly payments are going to be between, I don't know, 800 bucks to 1500 bucks per month. You know, it could right. be something like that. Right. And that's projecting it based off, you know, what the rehab costs may be. Yes, right. sir. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Man. Sorry. Sorry for, uh, you know, kind of the, the technical stuff, but that's, uh, you know, just the explanation I thought would be, would be decent. Yeah. hundred percent. You're good. This is perfect because, you know, our audience, you guys, you have to know what to expect when you go and speak with the lender. I'm bringing you this content so you can understand, you know, once you're speaking with the lender and once you're have your own deals that you're looking to close on, then you know the knowledge of the industry, you know exactly, you know, what to do. So, you know, Aaron, how can people go about getting in contact with you if they had any questions about private money lender, you know, beyond this episode? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, so I also have a YouTube channel as well. It's just, uh, you know, Aaron Trevino on YouTube. Um, you know, so we also uh, have a podcast where we bring on other knowledgeable people who are in the construction industry. So there could be um, something there for, for some of your viewers. Um, in terms of contacting me, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, um, and I'm also on Instagram. So Aaron P. Trevino. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to, to connect with anyone, uh, whether they're in, in the Texas market or looking uh, to come to Texas or maybe in another market, you know, always glad to connect with good people. Guys, there you have it. So definitely make sure you connect with Aaron after this interview. So Aaron, when it comes to, you know, working with investors and, um, you know, uh, working with investors and other clients, what do you specifically, you know, look for in the client beyond the deal? I know you said it's about the person himself. Do you look for, you know, having a connection with your client or is it mainly just about the numbers? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, everyone wants to work with, with someone who's motivated, right? And I think that that kind of, that's kind of across the board. And, you know, although our clients have different projects, maybe they'll do flips or development or new construction, at the end of the day, they all have one thing in common. They're motivated to get their, their project done. Mm. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you know, basically recognizing, you know, as, as mentioned before, is it, you know, we're, we're both in the same boat on the same team here and uh, looking, looking to get it done right and, and get it done quickly so you can, you know, uh, do the next one, right? Exactly, exactly. And, yeah. you know, the big thing right there, guys, motivation doesn't have an age, right? So you can be motivated at 18, you can be motivated at 60 or 100. So there's no age cap, right, when it comes to, you know, working with private money lenders, right? Yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, I guess really like anything as well, there's no, uh, you know, there, there's no one size fits all, right? Because everyone's deal is different. Everyone's strategies can be different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you come from or, or your age or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you've got a good idea and you've got a good project, you know, someone's going to be there to listen to you, right? Right, right. And I think that's, you know, really a cool thing about real estate. I feel like more than any other industry, you can be, you know, with wholesaling real estate, at least you can be, you know, 15, you can be very young when you start. And also, you know, when it comes to uh, getting in to flipping projects, as you said, it's about the deals. When you have numbers on the paper, people are willing to listen to you. And especially if you have a solid track record. So, you know, that's why it's definitely important for you guys to not only begin early, but to begin with a purpose and a form connection. So people can know what exactly you're looking to get out of the situation.
Um, Aaron, you know, do you do you have anything to add? Maybe something that you know I haven't asked you that could be very important to the audience. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, just to piggyback off, you know, you you brought you opened up the door on something really interesting as well as you know talking about about age, you know, potentially being too young to get into something. You know, really, we're we're living in a really interesting time considering you know we have one very powerful tool and it's called the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, had we been born decades ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now, mm, right? Yeah. And it's almost like everything has become, uh, you know, obviously digitized and, um, you know, we're in the information age now and it's, uh, you know, the, the you know, opportunity abounds. You know, if there's something you want to do, it doesn't even have to be construction or real estate related. You know, there, there's a, a world of opportunity and other like-minded people, you know, like yourself in the real estate space or in, in crypto or whatever, there's someone else uh, there that you can link up with. Right, man, that's huge. That's huge. Like, yeah, you and I would never even, you know, came in contact if it wasn't for the internet. So <laughs> that's a big one. And, you know, the internet doesn't care about your age. And, you know, when it comes to crypto, that doesn't care about any government standards or anything. So it's just like a, a you know, a blue ocean, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Are you familiar with that book, uh, Blue Ocean Strategy? Was that the one you told me about a while back? Um, no, 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 that wasn't that one. I forgot the name of that one. But the Blue Ocean Strategy is just, uh, you know, basically about, you know, the red ocean is all these competitive markets. So just basically very, the red ocean is the competitive side. So it's the, what's already discovered. So, you know, people that are, um, let's say in real estate, they often focus on the functionality side of the business as far as with numbers and things like that. So the blue ocean side of it with real estate would be to focus more on the emotional side of things. So how to really appeal to the, to the ethos of people versus being just about the functionality of it. So I just don't um, you know, think that's a, a very, just really testament of the times that we're living in with the internet, because, you know, the there's no set standards of the internet like you said beyond real estate there's no set standards on what you can do with your platform so um that's definitely a good book for you to check out it's by like chin something with the chin it's a good book though <laughs> yeah no thank you d'angela i really appreciate that uh, recommendation because uh you know I, I trust your judgment because i i know that you do like uh you like to fill your mind with the right stuff no doubt bro no doubt you know um in in your investing journey over the last two years with you know you being in the construction lending services do you have any books that you would recommend to the audience that kind of really helped you understand more about construction lending and private money lending any books uh honestly no <laughs> I, I don't uh okay. you know frankly i i haven't really i haven't really read any particular any particular books about construction lending yeah, I guess, you know, given that construction lending is very specific and nuanced. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, kind of kind of as we spoke before about, you know, being in the information with the Internet, right. um, you know, really information is at your fingertips. Right. You know, with a, you know, with a, just putting your fingers on the keyboard and, you know, typing something in YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. someone's there to teach you something. Right. That's true. Um, so like anything, you know, anyone can theorize anyone can can look like a genius when times are good mm. but you know maybe when your back's against the wall it's a bit tight it's a bit tough and you know you're just trying to, to toy with things and experiment and try to find out a way you know something something can happen mm. that's 100 percent true bro you, like the the fact of i always felt like you know with the era that we live in right now it's really just about discipline you know we speak about motivation and motivation is one thing but really it comes down to discipline because you know, you and I, let's say we have a great conversation right here. I could be motivated, you know, potential viewers, they could be motivated to go out and, you know, get their first construction lending. But if they are not disciplined enough to, you know, fill their mind with the right knowledge to be able to come across the right circumstances to actually utilize a person like you and your services, then it really doesn't matter. So, you know, it really is so much about discipline. If you want to learn it, it's right here at your fingertips, guys. And this kind of really just made me think about something, Aaron, how, you know, say we have somebody watching this right now and they're like, man, you know, construction lending sounds cool. I feel like this is something that I could see myself doing. How could they go about getting in the industry? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I'd be happy to chat with anybody at all who's interested. 
Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of getting into it, um, you know, I would just start researching a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously that there's the internet, there's YouTube, um, but at the end of the day, they don't tell you all of the, they don't show you, you know, a lot of the really intricate details. Right, and, right. You know, th there's really no way of, uh, I guess, really developing uh, an opinion on something unless you start learning about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, and it's one of those things also is, I, I don't know if you're familiar with maybe like paralysis by analysis. Right, yeah. And, and I, I've been guilty of it too as well, but you know, it's kind of this thought because we have so much information, mm -hmm. it, it's almost like, oh, well, if I watch uh, seven Gary V videos, it means I did something with my day, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're still sitting, you're still laying in bed and you don't have anything to show for it. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, it, it, it could be a good idea just to, you know, try to take action based off the information you have and just kind of put one foot in front of the other, even if, you know, the path isn't entirely clear. Right. Yeah. That paralysis analysis is a big thing, uh, you know, especially when it comes to really any industry. But I know in the wholesale side of things, there were people that, you know, when I first got into the business and heard about it, they were still, you know, six months later telling me about new videos that they watched versus, you know, deals that they came across, which is a major difference in uh, yeah. my only mindset, but also, you know, the type of person that you are. Um, you know, the era that we live in, it really doesn't allow for many excuses. It, it just shows you, you know, what you want to be. If you want to do it, you really can do it. Um, so did you go to school to, to become a construction lender? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, uh, in college, I studied communication and business. Okay. Um, so, you know, I did have a, a minor in business as well. And then I did an oil and gas program too. So, okay. Uh, minor, it's technically energy management, but basically yeah. oil and gas certificate. So I guess my background is, um, you know, just business and oil and gas. Right. And um, my senior year in college, I actually interned for the company that I work for now. Nice. Um, and, you know, they eventually offered me a job and I guess the, the rest is history, right? Right, right. That's what's up. And oil and gas, that's um, pretty big down there in Texas. So I'm assuming you went to a school in Texas? Yes, sir. I went to uh, the University of Texas at, at Austin. Yeah. Um, so, you know, right, right in the heart. Um, it's, uh, you know, our, our state capital. It's a, it's a great place to, you know, not only to visit, but also to live. Um, yeah. I'm very biased because, you know, I, I fell in love with Austin for the first time. I, I came here when I was a little kid and okay. just decided to stick around. Okay, that's what's up. So you are, are you originally, you're not originally from Texas, are you? Uh, I am from Texas. So I, I grew up in Texas, you know, um, I grew up in Corpus Christi. So if you're not familiar, um, you know, it's two hours south of San Antonio on the Gulf of Mexico. Right. Um, so, you know, relatively close to the beach, pretty, pretty relaxed, a, a bit, bit of a different culture um, right. from Austin. Um, in, in, you know, um, so it, it's, it's interesting kind of living in, in a place like Texas where you know, it's uh, it, it's it's a big melting pot in a way, but you know, obviously the, the people here are very very proud of the culture too. Right, man, that's what's up. So, you know, it's crazy. I, I watch um, Value Tainment. Uh, do you watch that podcast? Yeah, that's with uh, Patrick Bed David. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah. So I was uh watching that podcast the other day, and they shared some information that I wasn't aware of. How the U.S. has uh three uh, power grids. So. You know, we have a West Coast, East Coast power grid, and then Texas has their own power grid. So how was it when the, the power went out down there a couple of months ago? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. I'll, I'll preface mm -hmm. it with that, right? But, okay. uh, you know, it, it was very tough um, for, for a lot of people, okay. um, you know, particularly the, the elderly too, right? Mm -hmm. um, so at least for me, I remember I went to bed that night and I could see little flurries and I didn't really think much of it. I was like, okay, it's going to snow a little bit. Right. So I wake up and it's snow white everywhere. Mm. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it, it must have snowed, you know, four, four or five inches by the time I woke up, Right. Uh, you know, it's seven o'clock in the morning, whenever. And uh, at first, you know, I thought, Hey, this, this is kind of cool, you know, just enjoying the, enjoying the snow. And, right. you know, we had fun and then, you know, it started getting dark. Right. Mm. And then, you know, I realized, wow, we don't have any power mm. uh, and it's pretty cold. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's why. How long did it last? Uh, we, at least for me, I was out of power in my apartment for about six days. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of tough. However, I was very fortunate because my neighbor, 
I actually went with my neighbor uh, to a friend's place. So we stayed at, at, at uh, her friend's apartment and they, they took me in, they had power. And it was the strangest thing because they live about three miles north of me. So my entire area was out, but you drive three miles north and they have power. Wow. That's wild. I thought there was the whole state, but yeah, that, I mean, it's good that they were able to get that power back on. Um, <laughs> something a, a little off topic here. Um, the, the podcast that I was watching, they were just discussing how the U.S. power grids aren't really meant to withstand any uh, sort of, you know, attacks, let alone, you know, if someone runs into the power grid, but also a cyber attack. You can, you know, shut down a power grid cyberly. Um, and your six day or a couple days experience, you know, how, what do you think would happen if the whole U S you know, went out of power for a couple of days? Uh, yeah, I mean, that would, that would definitely, uh, not, not be very good. Right. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I also didn't really, you know, and it's interesting, I guess, kind of tying it back to real estate was prior to, at least here in Texas, prior to the, you know, I guess the snow apocalypse or whatever they called it. Right. Right. No, you know, when you were purchasing real estate in the city of Austin, no, no one ever thought, hey, I want to be on a hospital grid, right? Mm. So um, I'm not exactly too familiar with, you know, the energy, the energy gridding system. Right. Um, however, you know, from what I was reading, they claim that uh, if you're within a, a certain uh, radius of a, of a hospital, you know, you're on their grid. So you're more than likely going to have power. Mm. Um, and I found out that where I live, I'm not on that grid. Whereas right. where my friend lived three miles north, Right. You know, they, they had one. Right. 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 Um, so, I mean, if the entire, you know, and, and, and that is, you know, what you just mentioned, D'Angelo, that's that is a big security concern. Right. Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cybersecurity from, you know, other entities or hackers or, or foreign nations or whatever it may be, you know, that's uh, along with real estate. Cybersecurity is, is huge and it's growing, too, because right. the need is there. Exactly. Man, that's, yeah, I didn't even think about that as far as a, a hospital grid. You know, to to tie it, you know, back into real estate, like you said, um, it kind of just made me think about something. I know you said when, when you, right now, when you're working with your clients, you know, a lot of them are purchasing vacant land and they're building on that vacant land. So, you know, you as a, a private money lender, construction lender, obviously you have to protect your your money and make sure that the return is going to come back. So, you know, I'm kind of curious, do you guys do a check or require for, you know, the clients to come back with approval stating that there's water actually on the land and that there's a power grid or power lines on the land? Because sometimes, you know, you can purchase vacant land and it's not connected to city water or sewer. They may have to do a septic system. Do you guys like check for those kind of things? Uh, yeah, definitely. So you brought us something really interesting. So, you know, we call that horizontal and, and vertical construction, right? Mm, okay. So, you know, what, what you just mentioned about the, the water hookup, the utilities, mm -hmm. um, you know, even putting in, you know, a gutter, a curb or whatever that may be, right. you know, that would be called maybe the infrastructure cost, or you would call that horizontal construction. Horizontal. Um, so that's basically, you know, preparing everything for the vertical, you know, when you go up, so the vertical would be the foundation, the framing, the drywall, the roof, right? Okay. Um, so that would be, you know, the, the difference horizontal and, and vertical. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's something I even think about right there. Just kind of clicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, with zoning requirements, do you guys have specific zoning requirements as well? Do you check with the county or do you just kind of rely on the client themselves to bring that knowledge to you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, whether someone's doing a, a new build for the first time or, you know, they're a seasoned, uh, you know, builder, developer, you know, we're going to check the zoning either way. Okay. Um, right. So, and that's really, you know, the client will do their due diligence. You know, a lot of the times that the clients are aware, you know, hey, this is what the zoning is. Right. Um, and it's also public record too, at least here in Texas. You know, if you want to buy, um, you know, maybe a, a lot, you know, an empty lot, um, and it's in the middle of the city, it's infill, you know, you can see what the zoning is. And then in the event that you want to tweak it a bit and say, oh, you know, I want to build this or I want to build that, you can go to the city and, and take care of the zoning. Exactly. And as far as it being on public record, guys, what he's referring to is if you go to your county auditor site, usually they'll tell you if it's like 
just vacant land or is it residential vacant land, commercial land, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different zoning codes that you have, but you can definitely see that on your county auditor site, usually no matter what county. One thing that's specific to Texas, though, um, and I think there's some other states out there, but I noticed when I you know, did a little dibbling, dabbling down in Texas, just looking at some real estate things, I noticed that you guys have a private system where you don't show where the property is sold for, right? Like you don't show how much the property was bought for or sold for, something like that, isn't it? I, you know, I, I wish I could speak on that. Um, I've heard of something like that, but I, I'm, really, I'm really not exactly sure. I got you. I got you. Yeah, there's it's something like that. I know because um, when you I have prop stream as like, uh, you know, what I do comps with when you pull comps on a uh, prop stream in Texas, you can't see how much they sold for. So, mm-hmm. you know, how do you guys kind of do the, the comparables? Do you um like, you know, rely on the, the client to bring you the comparables or do you go ahead and, you know, work with a certain real estate agent or something like that to see what the comparables are uh, as far as, you know, what the net profit will be and things like that. Yeah, totally. You know, so we'll, we'll do both, right? So, you know, sometimes our clients, um, you know, maybe they're working hand in hand with a realtor mm-hmm. and I'll say, hey, do you have any comps or comparables on the property? They'll say, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, have the realtor send them, right? right. So that would be one way. Um, but whether they have, you know, those comps organized from a realtor or not, we're still going to do our own due diligence. So, you know, if you're, you know, looking to build in a certain zip code, you know, we're going to look all around that neighborhood, all around that zip code to get an idea more or less, you know, hey, uh, homes on average are selling for, you know, 300,000 in this neighborhood, right? Right. I got you. Okay. And, you know, I'm curious, how many uh, deals are you guys lending on per month on average? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I, I really, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I, got, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I wish I could, I could give a confident answer on that, but yeah. I, I will, it's enough to keep us busy, I guess. <laughs> there it is. That's all that matters. Keep the lights on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Man. Right. So, you know, I know you said you guys are lending, uh, in addition to Texas, it's also Washington state, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, and Virginia. Those places, you know, they're kind of spattered from coast to coast, from north to south. What are some, you know, kind of jurisdictions or things that you guys uh, check for in each state? Like, does it kind of vary from state to state? Or is it kind of more like, you know, you're a private company, these are your rules that follow. And, you know, if it doesn't, basically, if it doesn't work, you don't lend in that state. Or is it like, it, does it depend more on what the state allows, if that makes sense? Yeah, understood. I mean, at least for, you know, for Texas, we lend all over Texas, you know, because um, I guess it's, it's probably legal, right? So um, maybe it's, it's the legal team that we have that kind of determines, you know, hey, maybe these are the states that uh, in a way kind of operate, you know, similarly to Texas, right. uh, I guess, for our business. Um, but that would, that would probably be a decision that was made, I guess, by, by our, our, our legal team. Exactly, exactly. And I realized that we did not get the official name of the company that you work with. What is the official name of the company? Uh, Streamline Funding. Straight line, Streamline Funding, right? Yes, sir. Streamline Funding. That's what's up. Streamline Funding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys, it, as you can see, I got the map on the wall right here. If you uh, have some maps on your wall, you need to make sure you pencil in each state that you may lend in and you guys can start mapping this out because It's very important, guys. I can't stress it enough. If you are familiar with my journey, you did see that, you know, I um, did have the the realtor side of things, which I, you know, did dabbed in for a little bit, found out it wasn't for me, more focused on the actual investing side. And the reason why is because when you are an investor, you get directly to the homeowner. And that's the best way to purchase a property, especially in this seller's market that we live in right now. And when you purchase this property directly from the homeowner, you ultimately control the exit strategy, guys. And that's that's huge because with you controlling the exit strategy, again, you can get streamlined funding, Mr. Antrovino on your team, and you can double your profits or you can decide to you know hold the property yourself and just keep it as a rental or you can decide to wholesale the property. So there's several different exit strategies with real estate, no matter what age that you are, you can start at you know 16 and as long as you have the numbers and they make sense, then that's all you need. 
So, you know, Aaron, when it comes to your real estate career, I know when I was on your platform, the Aaron Trevino podcast, we talked about how, you know, you were a realtor as well, but, um, you know, you were mainly focused on the construction side of things. And you also were looking for your first investment property. It's been like a month or so since we have spoken. How close are you to getting your first investment property? Uh, yeah, relatively close. No. Um, you know, at least right now, I'm kind of uh, kind of tunnel vision on, you know, the construction financing. Right, right. Um, you know, more so because that's, you know, kind of my, my day job. That's where I spend most of my time. Right. Um, so, you know, just really looking to, to hone in on that and do that well. And exactly. then, um, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll have a better response by the end of the year, right? No, you definitely will. And I brought it up because, you know, I want the audience to know, you know, what, are, what is your buying criteria? What are you looking for? So they can definitely send you over some deals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, vacant land, Central Texas, um, right? So, you know, uh, any sort of infill lots, um, I'm open to uh, mostly Central Texas. So, you know, as far south as, um, you know, San Antonio, as far north, uh, maybe Colleen. Right. Um, so that's slightly north of Austin. But, you know, generally Central Texas like to stay around that area okay. um, looking for, for lots or um, maybe smaller multifamily. And, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. There it is, guys. So if you have some deals, make sure you go ahead and send them over to Aaron and definitely check out the Aaron Trevino podcast, guys. He's bringing you information from all sides of the business. You have serial entrepreneurs, you have multifamily investors, you have syndicators, every which in every way you can think about real estate, it's on his podcast. So definitely make sure you go and check that out. Send him over the deals that he just explained to you with his buying criteria and also connect with them with any private Monday lending questions. And if you're in the states that we had named that he does the business on in, make sure you connect with Streamline Funding so they can fund your construction deals. And guys, um, Aaron, again, thanks for coming on to the podcast, man. We really appreciate having you. Um, if you are, you know, um, guys, if you, if you are interested in learning more about real estate and, you know, different aspects of real estate from CPA, from retirement planning to private money lending, and also different fix and flip strategies. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can tune into the newest episode of Flipping Success. And as always, get to stepping.